ask her, why are you inviting another girl to Europe if you got a whole fiance, a whole girlfriend? It hasn't rape and been through enough? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Demi. Welcome back to another weekly rant. Y'all know every Sunday I come up on here and rant about whatever's going on in the universe. If you didn't know that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can find out what I'll be putting down. Anyway, I know last week in my weekly rant, I was talking about Love is Blind because I was so invested in this season for some reason. I don't know. It just really had my attention. And remember last week, I was telling you about how I expected all the couples to be who the couples were, except for um, Colleen and Mark or Matt, whatever his name was. I was like surprised that she said yes because he was a hothead. But we're not talking about them today. We're talking about SK and Raven. If you don't know, if you're not in the TikTok universe, it has come to my attention. Y'all remember last week I was saying that I was Team SK. Like, I really liked him. I thought he was cute. I liked his voice. Turns out, SK has been cheating on our girl, Raven. Okay, so I'm not going to put all the receipts in this video because I literally just found out this morning. And y'all know when I post these rants, I post them in real time. Like, I mean, I'm recording this at 1040 in the morning. It's probably going to go up by 12 o'clock. So I'm not going to do a deep dive and all that's happened but there's a youtube channel grace report she went into some of the receipts that was given or you can literally go on tiktok and type in sk cheating and everybody got their receipts there but anyways sk cheating on our girl raven first of all so love is blind was shot in april 2021 i believe and he has a hinge profile and wait mind you if you already seen the reunion whatever sk and raven are still together like he even before the reunion even came out he was still posting pictures of her they were where he was wishing she was wishing him a happy birthday they seemed very much in love and the reunion confirmed that they were still in love and they were still dating although he was in berkeley at college or whatever anyway so it's been two girls that came out the woodwork talking about how they're dating sk and basically sk is just this playboy First off, let me just say that SK is Nigerian and he is Yoruba. I hope I'm saying that correctly. He is a Yoruba and basically the Yoruba men are known as demon, like amongst the women and stuff because apparently, allegedly, they're like the worst kind of guys to date. This is not from my mouth. I've never dated anyone that's Nigerian or things like that, but this is around the Nigerian Yoruba community. Um, anyway, so one girl came out the woodwork. Her name is Emma M. Um, she basically met him off a of hinge and they were like texting or whatever. But my whole thing is when she came with her receipts, I feel like she was like holding a lot of stuff back because he was seeming super thirsty and she was just responding mad dry. Maybe I'll put like a clip of their text messages just so y'all can see in reference. Um, he hit her up talking about some, hey, this is SK from Hinge. He was like, oh, I don't think community, I don't think um, computer science major. She was like, pardon? Anyway, her end of the messages seems very dry. So it seemed like she was like holding back or like deleting some of the messages or something like that. Because if you matched with him on Hinge and then gave him your number, clearly you were interested in him. Why do your side of the text messages just show you being super dry? Like if you're interested in somebody, why are you being this dry? And she also later posted, uh, she, I mean, she also later sent him a picture of her in a bikini. So if you're not really interested in this guy, why would you give him your number? Why would you match with him on hands? And why would you send him a picture of you in a bikini? Like he asked to meet up with her several times. She's just like, no, I'm too busy. And she doesn't alter, she doesn't offer an alternative time when she's not busy. Um, she's basically really giving him the cold shoulder. I think she was texting him for about maybe three months. Like he invited her to Europe and everything. Ask him, why are you inviting another girl to Europe if you got a whole fiance, a whole girlfriend? Why, SK, why? You're really letting me down here. Um, and then there was another girl, Hannah. Hannah was his ex-girlfriend. So Hannah was his ex-girlfriend, and maybe I'll put some receipts right here. I'm gonna put some links to the TikToks in the description box so y'all can go back and reference that. I don't wanna have to like put everything in this video, but Hannah was his ex-girlfriend, and she didn't know, well, she said he had sent him she said he had sent her a flyer to like love is blind or whatever and she didn't think anything of it because he said it was just she thought it was a joke 
um, they were traveling together. They went to some places. He was inviting her. Apparently, SK just loved flying these women out. He loved taking these girls on boats and yachts and things like that. Um, anyway, he had she had found out that um, you know he was going on for the show or whatever, and he told her. He straight up told her, "Oh, I'm just doing. This is just my fake fiance." I'm just doing it for the money. I'm just doing it for clout. It's not real. How you gonna do my girl Raven like that? Like, hasn't Raven been through enough? Like, I was surprised that she was ready to marry you. And you talking about something, you just doing this for clout. You just doing this for money. Like, none of this is real. Like, Raven isn't a real girl who was clearly in love with you. Who clearly assimilated to your culture to make you feel better. First of all, well, second of all, I don't know how many offs I'm on, but... Raven really like embraced his culture because you know Nigerians they have a lot of culture stuff like even on their wedding day she wore like the little you know culture hat or whatever with her wedding dress and that to me symbolized that she was really you know embracing who he was and you know where he's from. The person he was talking to was a white woman. That's to say that white women aren't Nigerian or white women aren't like a part of you know African culture and things like that. But y'all really made it seem like, oh, he wanted somebody who would embrace his culture. He wants somebody to cook for him. He wants somebody to be mommy. He wants somebody to be, you know, out of the Nigerian culture and embrace that. But she is like the complete opposite of everything that she said you wanted. So was it? Was he really telling the truth about this being for money? Probably yes. He probably was just doing this for clout, and he got it apparently. So yeah, SK has apparently been cheating on Raven, and he trifling. And uh, both of the girls ended up messaging Raven. I don't think she responded to any of them, but um, she, as of right now, she has deleted all their pictures of um, SK on her page because they used to have a lot of like lovey dovey pictures on her page, on her Instagram page, and she deleted all of it. I think she also unfollowed him, but I'm not too sure. Anyways, yeah, so that's the love is blind drama um we're gonna see how this unfolds maybe next week we'll have more tea but yeah go in my description box and look at the links that i posted and that'll give you more in depth or who said what or what's going on with that anyways transitioning from people who are not trifling let's talk about beyonce now y'all know she dropped her renaissance album like in august and let me tell y'all when she first dropped it i was not feeling it i was i was not a fan I literally was listening to it like, what the heck is this? Like, upon my first listen, I literally skipped through the songs. But I felt like I wasn't fair to my girl B. I felt like I was looking forward to her releasing an album of a particular sound. Like, I was looking forward to maybe, like, singing and all in love and things like that. And then she released this song, this album, and I was just like, oh, my ears are hurting. Let me tell you, honey, I gave our sister Beyonce another chance, and she ate it up like i don't know what made me listen to the album again i think i was actually going for a walk in the park or like a little run or whatever and the song one of the songs came on and i was like oh shoot this is really like making me upbeat <laughs> whatever and the songs are bangers after bangers after bangers after bangers like beyonce she really put her foot up in that album like that album is really like positivity it'll make you feel like you're that girl she literally the first song on her album is called that girl with the songs on her album the transitions on her albums are flawless her album literally feels like you're at a party like the whole album feels like you're in a party and every track that comes on afterward it feels like it's all one song and I absolutely love it I have been listening to it like non-stop on my way to work on my way home if y'all have not heard Beyonce's album yet y'all need to go listen to it because honey she did her thing with that album <laughs> um next thing I want to talk about is <laughs> there's not really something to talk about but I noticed that people have different pronunciations of this word. Like some people like me, I say police. I said the police did this, that, and a third, yada, yada, yada. And then some other people say police. Like I know it's the O in there, but they really like enunciate the O, like police. Like do you say police? If you say police, put in the comments police as in, as in P-A-L-I-C-E. Or if you say police, like why do y'all enunciate the O so much? Like, is it actually police or is it actually police? Like, every time I hear it, it triggers me. I'm just like, 
mid sentence like why did you feel the need to say that like that <laughs> anyway speaking about police i don't know if y'all heard but there's this woman her name is shanquilla robinson shanquilla or shanquilla i'm sorry if i messed up her name but i'll put her name on the screen just so i get it right um she was a 25 year old woman and she went to mexico with her friends heavy on them because they did her dirty. It was like five or six of them. They went on a trip to Mexico. I'm not sure how long they were there. I'm not sure about the timelines. I'll put links in the description box. But one night she talked to her mother. Told her mother that she was about to have tacos. They had a chef for their little villa or whatever. Then the next day she was dead. Like what? And her one of the people that were there on the trip with her was her best friend Khalil. Like best friend. He'd be coming to the family house. They spent time together. They'd been best friends for like five or six years. And he had called uh, his, her mother to tell her that the girl was feeling sick. She wasn't feeling too well. She had alcohol poisoning. They had to get the EMTs over. Um, the EMTs couldn't kind of resuscitate her, things like that. She was passed out. She was dead. And her mother is just like, what? I just spoke to my daughter yesterday and I told him she's dead. What? I don't understand. And then what's shady about the friends, they were supposed to be in Mexico for a certain amount of time. But they ended up leaving like a day after Shanquilla died. They ended up leaving Mexico. Leaving Shanquilla in Mexico. And her mother said that all of, all of the friends I was there told her a different story about her and this alcohol poisoning. Quote unquote. I don't know what else the friends told her. But um, anyways. So her dad found out that her daughter had died or whatever. And they had to like bring her body back to Mexico or whatever. And they hired uh, um, an autopsy just to see what happened to their daughter. And it turns out the daughter had a cracked neck and a ruptured spleen. Alcohol poisoning don't do all of that. Like what are you talking about alcohol poisoning? Why is her daughter beat up? Her daughter was literally beat up. The medical examiner basically said this had nothing to do with alcohol poisoning. She was beaten. And all the friends are like, oh, we don't know nothing about her being beaten. We don't know anything about her being beaten, things like that. Oh, mind you, when they came back from Mexico, the best friend Khalil, he was going over to the mother's house to console her. He was spending time with them for four whole days. Four days he was going over there spending time with them. When the mother got the call that her daughter had been beaten, that's the autopsy reported, she asked the best friend, oh, do you even know anything about that? He's talking about some, oh, I don't know nothing about a fight. I don't know nothing about a beating. All of a sudden he wasn't feeling well and he had not came back to the house ever since she had found out what happened with the autopsy report. So it really seemed like he was just going over there to find out what she knew. It's really what you were doing and you're trifling. So yeah, he said he wasn't there, but then a video surfaced on the internet of Shanquilla basically getting her behind whooped. Like she was naked. She was naked and she was getting her behind whooped by another girl and all her friends were in the room and they were like recording it. First of all, if y'all had plans on doing this girl wrong or whatever, why would you record it? If you wanted to be on something that happens in Mexico, stays on Mexico, why would you record your friend getting beat up naked? And I can't even say it was a fight because they're literally, the person that was recording, they're, really, they're literally saying in the video, oh, fight back, defend yourself, fight back, defend yourself. And she's literally being dragged around the room like a rag doll, naked. And then you see Khalil in the video, like Khalil was right there in the video, like as the person's recording, recording the fight. Khalil's right there in the video, so what's the truth? Anyways, the FBI has officially opened up an investigation to see what happened, and I'm sure as more time passes by, uh, more stuff will come out. Some of the people that were on the trip in Mexico, they've been going on lives and stuff saying different things. The true crime community has been analyzing everything they're saying, and a lot of people are saying that a lot of the stuff that they're saying doesn't add up, doesn't make sense because how did you tell her mother that she had alcohol poisoning? Like, did you just think that nobody was going to look further into that? Like, did you just think that they wasn't going to bring their daughter back to America and see that she was beaten? Like, I don't understand it. Anyways, that's all I have to say for this video. There is a GoFundMe set up for her and her family so that we can get justice for her. Um, Kyrie Irving actually donated $65,000 to that GoFundMe. I'm gonna put the link in the description box because we need to know what happened to her daughter and this is just trifling. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching my video. You know, let's talk in the comments. Tell me about what you feel in the comments about any of these situations. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!